so let me tell you one important thing okay so i checked your i checked your homework and i'm so sorry to tell you that i did i did not receive all the assignment okay some of you have done incomplete some of you some of you have submitted incomplete work isn't it and some of you have not submitted the work so this is not going to happen again all right so i request you i urge you to sub, uh, submit your work the next time okay so do not please do not uh, feel to submit your work all right now let's get started okay so last time let me repeat let me revise what we learned last time so last time we learned about weight and we learned about the differences between mass and weight right we learned about the differences between mass and weight and we also learned we also learned one numerical okay to calculation of the weight so let me tell once again mass is a mass talking about mass mass is a constant quantity it is also called the total amount of matter contained in a body all right so mass is defined as the total amount of uh, matter or total amount of substances that makes the matter that makes the substance all right that makes the object that is called mass and talking about weight weight is the force with which a planet a planet could be earth right not only planet you should say heavenly body even moon also does have uh pulling force the moon also exerts pulling force on certain body right and then uh, other planets like jupiter saturn uranus neptune or okay all the planets they they exert a kind of pulling force that pulling force the pulling force of the planet towards a body upon a body okay that is called weight and talking about its unit the unit of mass is kilogram that is noted by kz whereas the unit of weight is newton n e w t o a newton that is noted by capital letter n all right so do not write a small letter n actually newton that is noted by the capital letter n all right you get the point and uh, mass is a constant quantity that means mass does not change when the places are changed okay mass does not change but if you talk about weight weight is a variable quantity weight is not same everywhere okay so weight it changed why weight is changed why weight is not constant because weight is calculated by the formula w equals m into z uh, last time i already told you w that is weight equals to weight is given by the formula m into g m that is mass of the body z stands for acceleration due to gravity okay acceleration which is caused by the gravity that is noted by a small letter g that's why so w equals to m into g mass is a constant quantity but g varies from place to place okay g is not same everywhere if we go to the equator g the value of g is quite less and if we go to the pole the value of g is quite more that's why when the value of g increases weight also obviously increases because weight is given by the formula w equals to m into g so mass does not change but g changes so when the value of g is more when the value of g increases weight increases and when the value of g decreases weight also decreases so this is this is why weight is a variable quantity right and we also learned numerical last time we solved on numerical okay now let us continue again all right so today we are going to learn about time all right and we are going to learn about the <coughs> devices that are used to measure time okay so let me share the screen you all will look on the screen clearly okay all right okay now let's get started all right let me hide okay let me hide this control panel ah so this is our slide so please see on the screen okay students so when ball is thrown so there is a question okay see on the screen clearly so that is very much important question see there when a ball is thrown upwards from the earth surface it returns back towards the earth surface why let's say let's take one let's take an example let's take a ball okay and when you throw that ball up to the certain height okay when you throw that ball with certain velocity up to the certain height after some time it again comes back to the earth surface isn't it why does it happen okay not only ball each and every object when you throw upwards all right it again falls down why does it happen okay so the answer is that when a ball when the ball is thrown upwards from the earth surface it returns back towards the earth surface because of gravity because of what gravity what is gravity you can see on the bracket there pulling force of the earth all right so due to the gravity due to the pulling force of earth whatever we throw upwards up to the certain height 
after some time it again comes back or again it falls down so that is all due to gravity okay so uh, with the falling of raindrops that is also due to gravity all right again the falling of mango from the mango tree that is also due to the gravity falling of apple from the apple tree that is also due to gravity okay so when when anything that is thrown upwards with certain velocity with certain speed again it falls down why does it happen it happens due to the pulling force of the earth that pulling force of the earth is called gravity okay so that is one question now let's go to the next slide okay so as i told you earlier that we're going to learn about time so measurement of time so before we begin about time i would like to tell you what is time time means what so you can see the definition there the duration between any two events is called time so duration between two events or you can say two um, uh, two point of time you can say let's say 9 a.m in the morning and 10 a.m in the morning what is the gap 9 a.m and 10 a.m the gap is one hour right so that one hour is called time okay saturday yesterday, yesterday was saturday and today is sunday what is the duration what is the gap the gap is one day that one day is called time okay uh, let's say um, your date of birth is 2060, all right? Let's see. Let's say your date of birth is 2060, uh, uh, let's say 2067 BS, all right? Not 67, let's say 2065 BS. So why the interval between 2065 BS and this today's time is 2077 BS? What is the interval? Okay. What is the interval? This interval is called time. So anyway, so the SI unit, SI stands for System International. The SI unit of time is second. So we usually measure time in terms of second. And you have to see that one minute equals to 60 seconds. In one minute, there are altogether 60 seconds. One hour equals to 60 into 60 seconds. That is 3600 seconds. Okay, when, uh, <clears throat> uh, so let's say this is one hour equals to 3600 seconds. And one day equals to one into 24. That is 24 into 60, that is 60. 24 into 60 that becomes minute and again when multiplied by 60 that becomes seconds so 86,400 seconds so these are the values related to time see once again one minute equals to 60 seconds one hour equals to 60 into 60 seconds that is equal to 3600 seconds 3600 seconds all right one day equals to one in 24 hours into 60 minutes into 60 seconds so that is altogether 86,400 seconds so that is equal to one day okay so this is all about one day okay students are you clear about time any confusion any confusion if you have confusion then raise your hand okay what is time that means the interval between two events let's say this is one event this is other event and the gap between two events let's say this one is 7 a.m in the morning this is 10 a.m in the morning what is the gap three hours right this three hours is called time so keep it in your mind that time is the interval or the duration between two events usually time is measured in terms of seconds all right the yes i unit of time is second the yes i unit of time is second all right and it is measured in terms of it is measured by the device called watts clock mechanical watts pendulum mechanical watts you can say mechanical watts pendulum clock all right and even atomic watches these devices are used to measure time okay and you knew the value i just gave you one table so from that table you are clear you, you are clear that one minute equals to 60 seconds one hour equals to 3600 seconds one day equals to 86400 seconds all right so this is all about time okay now let me share the screen once again okay so are you clear please raise your hand if you are clear are you clear about time great are you clear about time students are you clear prisma raise and properly if you are clear okay are you clear, Prisma? That's great. Price, are you clear about time? Wonderful. Use an Are you clear? All right, that's great. Wonderful. Prasan, are you clear? Okay, wonderful. So, God, are you clear? That's great. I cannot hear your song, but I can see your hand movement. So, please raise your hand, okay? Hmm. Now, I hope you people are that's wonderful. Great. Okay, fine. Okay, now let me share the screen once again, okay? Now we are going to learn about Janet. This is Janet. You can see the word there, Z-E-N-I-T, Janet. What is Janet? 
So zenith is just the imaginary point, the point in the space just above the observer's head. It's called zenith, all right? Zenith means the point on the space, or you can say the point that lies in the space, or that point just lies above your head, all right? The point that lies just above your head, that is called zenith. The point that lies just above your head, that is called zenith. Okay? Let me go to the camera again okay so let's say you are standing just you can look at me hmm. let's say you are standing at one place and the point which is right over your head let's say this is the point this is called zenith okay suppose you stand here the point zenith also changes here if you go here again the zenith changes okay that means when you go when you change your place the zenith that the point the, the point which is right over your head that goes on changing so the point which is just above your head, that is called zenith. All right. So zenith is not a constant point. When you move a place, that also moves. Okay. Suppose you are standing here. The point this is called zenith. This could be zenith. Okay. Above that could be zenith. And if you stand here, okay, this is your zenith. Okay. If you go there, again okay, the zenith changes. That means the point which is just above your head, in the space, the imaginary point that is just imaginary. Okay. The imaginary point that is that just lies above your head. In the space that is called that is called what zenith you get the point the point which is just above your head that lies in the space that imaginary point that imaginary point is known as clear students are you clear if you are clear then please raise your hand okay karun bhujal you seem energetic you have not eaten anything you look tired exhausted okay be energetic right boy be energetic yes okay that's great let me tell you once again the point which lies just above your head. The point which lies just above your head and that lies in the space, the imaginary point that is called zenith. Okay, let me share the screen once again. Now let's talk about what is one mean solar day or one day. Okay, one mean solar day or one day, they both are same. So you can see there uh, the time taken by the sun to return to the zenith from the earth's surface is called the mean solar day, or you can say. If you find this point is difficult, then you can go to the second one. One second means one by 86,400 part of this. Oh, sorry, one, how many you say? All right, okay, so that is the time taken, the time taken by the sun to return to the zenith from the earth surface is called one mean solar day. Or, or it is also can, can be, uh, you can, you can, it also, it, it is also one day, by the way, one day. That means the time taken, let me magnify, okay? Let me make it a little big. Uh, one day, the time taken, the time taken by the sun, the time taken by, the time taken by the earth to make one rotation about its own axis. Rotation about its own axis. It's called, one day it is also the definition okay the time taken by the earth we know that earth has two kinds of motion isn't it what earth revolves around the sun that is called revolution and earth rotates about its own axis that is called rotation okay so the time taken by the earth to make one complete rotation about its own axis is called one day and its value is 24 hours what is the value of one day? One equals to 24 hours, all right? So this is all about one day. So are you clear? The time taken, Earth has two kinds of motion, okay? One, that is revolution, that moves around the sun. Let's say if this is the sun, then Earth moves around the sun in this way. Let's say the center point is sun and this one is Earth. It moves around the sun, isn't it? So this motion is called revolution. I'm not talking about revolution, okay? I'm talking about rotation. Let's say this is the Earth. Let's say this is Earth, okay? So it has it moves in this way about its own axis, right? So this movement, this movement of the Earth is called rotation. Let's say from this point, the Earth is starting to rotate from this point, all right? You can see the red mark here, label. So let's say from this point, Earth is start, starting to rotate. And it goes like this. And, and again, it comes to this point, all right? So this is called this is one complete rotation. This one complete rotation is known as one day. All right, clear? So that the time taken by the earth 
to make one complete rotation around its own axis that is equal that is called one day and its mathematical value equals to 24 hours did you get the point the mathematical the mathematical value equals to 24 hours that is called one day all right or you can say the time taken by the sun to return to its own to return to the zenith let's say sun started from here and it goes like this okay and it goes it moves and tomorrow again it comes to the same point so this is also called one day that means the time taken by the sun to return to its zenith let's say sun begin from this point all right so let's say sun begin from this point okay and it goes it goes it goes and again tomorrow it comes to the same point so this is also called one day anyway so the time taken by the earth to make its one complete rotation around its own axis that is called one day or the time taken by the sun to return to its zenith from where it started are you clear so that is called one day that is equal to the mathematical value of one day equals 24 hours are you clear are you clear if you are clear then please raise your hand okay that's great okay now let me go to nirvik will you please switch on your mic nirvik yes sir okay tell me what is one day on the no time time taken by the earth to rotate uh, it a full uh, the time taken by the earth to rotate a uh, full axis axis is called time is called one day okay the time taken by the earth to make one complete rotation, rotation. around its own axis all right do not yes, miss sir. the word uh, around its own axis all right so that is called one day okay what is its value its value is 24 hours seriously are you sure yes sir Yes, okay, that's wonderful. That's great. Now let me go to Sanisa. Will you please switch on the mic, Sanisa? Yes, sir. Tell me what is one day? One day. I cannot the see the time taken by switch on your camera first. I cannot see. I need to see you, okay? Okay, yes. Now go on, please. The time taken by the again, I cannot see you. Okay, please go on, go on, go on, go on. The time right. taken. Hello. Yes, yes, I can listen to you. Okay, please go on. The time taken by the art to make one complete rotation about its own axis is called one day. What and what is its value? Twenty-four hours. That's great. Okay, wonderful. Abhishek Basnet, will you please switch your mic? Tell me what is zenith? Yes, what is zenith? Sunny sir, please. And just going. a second. Just a second, okay. Sunny sir, switch off your mic. Yes, go on, please. Sir, my net is going and coming, so I can just now. That means your net is not stable, yes, is it? Sir. I think. All right. What happened to this net, sir? I don't know. Okay, maybe. Okay, I understand that this is our country, Nepal. Okay, anyway. Hmm. Now, fine. So I hope you people are clear about Janet. All right. Okay, and you people are clear about one day. Okay, now let's learn about one standard second time. Okay, let me share the screen once again. All right, now you can see there. Okay, let's talk about one standard second or one second. Okay, uh, what is one second? You might wonder what one second is. All right, you can see there one second. It is also called, it is also called one standard second. Both are same thing. Okay, what is one second or one standard second? All right. So, see there. Okay. Let's say, let me show you one calculation. Let's say one day. Because we let us convert this day into second. How do you convert? One into 24. This becomes hour, isn't it? Again, into 60. That becomes a minute. Okay, into 60 that becomes seconds so if you if you uh, multiply this we'll get the answer this okay 86,000 86, uh, seconds right so this is equal to one day and what happens when this value what happens when 86,400 86 1400 that is divided by what happens when it is divided by what happens when it is divided by 86400 again what answer comes okay it becomes it is equal to one isn't it it is equal to 
when 86,400 is divided by 86,400, that becomes one. So let's say this is division sign, all right? When 86,400, that is divided by 86,400, that becomes one, isn't it? All right? That is equal to one. So that means one day means this is the definition of one day. Okay? Uh, one standard day or one day means what is one day? One day means um, that is one day means one upon eighty six four hundred part of one day. Here you can see the calculation there. See the definition, okay? So one day means one by eighty six part of one day. One, sorry, one, not one day, one second, that means one second, all right? One second means one by 86,400 part of one day. So when one day is divided into this much part, or you can say when one day, when one day is, uh, you can say fragmented, or you can say splitted. Splitted means two kreon, right? It is called fragmented, okay, two kreon, small piece of convert one, right? When one day, or you can say when one day is fragmented into 86,400 parts. Let's say one day is uh, fragmented into 86,400 parts, right? And each single part is called one second. All right, so when one day is divided into 86,400 parts, all right? That each single part is called one second. Okay, all right. So let's say you have laid one meter. All right. When one meter is cut into hundred parts, one single part is called one centimeter, isn't it? When one meter is cut into one hundred single parts, okay. Let's say you have one meter length. All right. You have one meter length. Let's say this is one meter length, and when one meter length is cut into hundred parts, hundred pieces, then this single piece is called what? Single piece is called one centimeter, isn't it? The single piece is called one centimeter in the same way when one day in when one day is cut into 86,400 parts when one day is cut into 86,400 parts each single part each single part that is called one second or one standard second all right okay so one standard day is defined as one by 86,400 part of one day okay one standard day is defined as one by 86,400 part of one day or one solar day. You can see the definition there. One second means one by 86,400 part of a day, part of one day or day, okay? So this is all about one day. So when one day is fragmented into 86,400 parts, each single part is called one second, all right? When one day is cut into 86,400 parts, all right? So that single part is called one second. So this is all about one second time all right so so you can see that one second is given as one by eighty six thousand four hundred seconds this is called one second it is important okay so please focus on that now let us learn about time measuring devices okay what are the devices we use while measuring time all right so basically we use what while measuring time okay but the watches can be classified into three all right we use watch to measure time. There are a few types of watches, okay? One is known as mechanical watch. You can see there, you can see the figure there too, okay? So this is mechanical watch. You can see the definition. Mechanical watch works on the basis of the oscillation of a simple pendulum. So it contains one kind of pendulum. You can see there, this is a pendulum. So this is a pendulum, okay? Inside there, it contains one rotating part. So this, can you see the rotating part there? This rotating part. This rotating part is called pendulum. So the, it, it is based, it works under the oscillation, under the vibration of the symbol pendulum. So mechanical watch works on the basis of the oscillation. Oscillation means vibration, okay? To and fro motion, all right? Oscillation means forward and backward motion. That is called oscillation, all right? So you might have seen pendulum clock, isn't it? It goes forward, backward, to and fro motion. That is called oscillation. So mechanical watch works on the basis of the vibration of the oscillation, or sorry, vibration of the simple pendulum. 
And one thing is to be clear that mechanical watch is affected due to the climatic conditions, so it does not give accurate time, all right? Mechanical watch is affected by temperature, climate, all right? So if there is extreme climatic conditions, let's say severe cold, all right? Or you can say very warm. So these are the climatic conditions. When the climatic conditions differ, under the extreme climatic conditions, these, these watches or you can say mechanical watches may not perform well. They do work, but they may not give the accurate time, okay? That's why they are taken as mechanical watches are not the best timekeepers. Okay? They do not, okay, they do not, uh, I mean, in a month, they might lose a couple of seconds, okay? not a couple of seconds, so like um, maybe three to four seconds time, they might lose in a month, okay? And it, they, it may go up to a minute also, all right? So that is called a mechanical watch. So you can see the figure there. So definition is that mechanical watch works the device or you can say the watch which works on the basis of the oscillation of the simple pendulum on the basis of the vibration of the simple pendulum that is called mechanical watch you can say pendulum watch pendulum clock and mechanical watch that is affected by the climatic conditions such as temperature humidity all right okay so the that's why they are not taken as the best timekeepers okay now let's go to second on quartz was. You might you are quite familiar with this one. I guess the was which we use in our daily life is quartz was. So the quartz was is the special was. It works under the vibration of the quartz crystals. You can see there, quartz was works due to the vibration of the quartz crystals. It has a quartz crystals inside it. Okay, so it works under the vibration of the quartz crystals. It is more accurate than mechanical was. All right, so it is it is very accurate, not totally accurate it also has some kind of error it also it is also not taken as the um, best timekeeper it is a fine timekeeper okay not best but it is a fine time fine timekeeper and it works under the vibration of the quartz crystals you can see there it works under the vibration of the quartz crystals all right and last but not the least we have atomic was the very much important one and quite expensive one okay atomic was the was which works due to the emission of radiation Radiation means a kind of rays that is released by cesium. This CS stands for cesium. Cesium 133 isotopes, okay? All right, so this is cesium one. Cesium is one kind of element, all right? So cesium is an element that releases, that gives a ray of that, uh, that radiates light, okay? And by the help of that light, this was work, okay? So that's why atomic was works due to the emission of the radiation by cesium and the 33 isotope, right? Isotope means, you know, you might know what isotope is or we shall learn this later in that uh, elements, classification of elements, okay? In next topic. So I, I, I would not want to tell much thing about isotopes now. Anyway, so the watch which is based or the watch which works under the emission of the radiation uh, of the cesium isotope that is called atomic watch. So it measures time very accurately. So they are taken as the best timekeeper, all right? So they do not lose time. They are wonderful and they are quite expensive as well. And you know what? These devices, uh, atomic watch is used in scientific experiments as they are best timekeepers, which is why they are taken as, they are taken in conducting scientific experiments, okay? So listen once again, there are three types of watches to measure time. One is known as mechanical watch. You might know what mechanical was. Mechanical was means the was which does not require battery. You might have seen automatic was. Have you seen automatic was? You have seen automatic was, right? Automatic means that works under the pulse like that, okay? You might have seen that. It does not require battery. That is called automatic was. So that automatic was, that is also called mechanical was. So that's a mechanical watches are not best timekeepers, okay? They do not give wonderful, they do not keep accurate time. They lose some seconds, all right? They do not lose one, two hours in a month, but they lose some seconds time, all right? That's about anyway. And it works under the, uh, you can see, oscillation of the pendulum. It has pendulum inside, like the two and four motion, up and down. Have you seen swing? You have seen swing, right? You have played swing. Goes up, go to the forward direction, and again comes back. That is called oscillation, okay? So uh, mechanical watch works under the oscillation of the pendulum, which is used inside it. And they are not taken as best timekeeper. And the watch which we use, okay, in our daily life, that is called quartz watch. That is also called the wristwatch. It uses, it contains battery and even it uses quartz crystals inside it, okay. It uses quartz crystals and they are taken as good timekeeper, not, not the best. They are good timekeeper, but uh, they do not lose most time. 
an atomic wall the was which uses ccm uh, which works okay by the radiation emitted by the ccm 133 isotope and they are taken as a base time keeper because they do not lose time okay, they are taken as base time keeper which is why these atomic watches are used in uh, performing scientific experiments okay all right they are used in performing scientific ex experiments as they are taken as base time keepers okay so this is all about types of watches all right now i hope you people are clear about this one so today we learned about um, we learned about time okay we learned about um, we learned about zenith we learned about devices which are used to measure time okay so this is it so do you have any confusion about this one what what we learned today if you have any confusion then you can speak to me okay you can tell me and i'm going to put, uh, i'm going to post or i'm going to put that slide on the internet so that you could see from the slide too and you can learn from the slide as, as well that's why i said put on the google classroom so please consult google classroom and one thing i would like to say you do not miss your assignment okay please submit your assignment all right we have one week time and in one week if you don't submit your assignment then what is the use of learning that's a please you have to submit your assignment so any confusion please raise your hand okay if you have any confusion then please raise your hand kelvin okay kelvin would you please switch on your mic yes sir okay tell me what is atomic watch an atomic uh, watch is the watch which is uh, an atomic watch is the watch which is uh, which works due to the emission of radi uh, which works due to the emission of radiation by cs uh, 1 and ccm 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 okay ccm okay so ccm 1 and uh, 133 isotopes all right okay that's great and are they taken as best timekeeper yes sir as they uh, they as they measure time very accurately uh, mm. as com as comparison to other types of watches they, uh, okay, that's it is right. fine okay and what uh, what is the use of this watch why what 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 is the use of this watch so as it uh, gives very accurate time it is used in the scientific experiments uh, the main right. use yes that's what? wonderful okay so we are almost end of the today's classroom so uh, all right, so we are almost end of the first lesson. Okay, so from today we have 